Hello, everybody. This is Scott Framiller here on The Mental Knot with Shelly Netco. And today we're going to talk about judgment. And that's a, that's a pretty, this is going to get deep. So um, fun. We'll have fun, but deeper deep. Deeper than usual. Deeper than, probably deeper than usual on this one. Okay. So, so let me tell you this story. This is my segment story to judgment. So we, <clears throat> I'm on, uh, we talked about the meetup thing or whatever. So this meetup thing just pops up one day mm -hmm. and it's about evil. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what this is about. So, and it was that day, like literally that day. And uh, so I, I te emailed the, or texted or whatever you do on Meetup. I messaged the lady and I was like, hey, you know, can I come? I know it's last minute or whatever. So it was full. And she's like, sure, you know, show up. And, uh, and I showed up and, and actually one of the guys watched our show before and he knew who we were. Oh, he saw us before. Yeah, he saw us before, which is cool. But it, w what's interesting about this is that there's this, they did it outside and there's like this circle of people and, and they were talking about like, what is evil, right? And, mm -hmm. and there was a little bit of, a, of talk about like religion and things like that, but what it boiled down to is, is, you know, is a lot to do with judgment. Like they talked about, you know, wars and conflicts and things like that, and that all related back to judgment. And I, and I also wanna note that, that all of these folks were very respectful of each other's opinion and hardly any of them agreed. With each other mm. but they were super respectful they were from all walks of life there's mm -hmm. a psychotherapist there there's a psychologist there there's a doctor there's a surgeon there was you know husband and wife it was fascinating to see that you know nobody nobody was judging right you know what i'm saying and and it, the other interesting part of this is like we all do it we all do it all the time but even going to that right like you see this house it's a nice house on the hill um you see a guy pull up on a motorcycle then you see somebody pull up in a nice car or a mediocre car mm -hmm. or whatever. And in the back of your mind, even a situation like that, every situation you're judging. And I don't even know if we realize it. Well, I mean, it goes back to the, um, the idea that in, in the first 30 seconds of meeting someone, we've made an assessment of who we think they are based on our judgment. Oh, totally. And that's not even fair. Which comes from our set of values and our experience. Oh, wow. This is going to be good. Right? Well, because it, that's absolutely. the only place we can come from. Right. And, and so if, if you take that out, of, if you take that out of a relationship or an interaction, things are totally different, right? Like if take judgment out. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally different. Mm -hmm. So an example, right? Um, one of my, a buddy that I grew up with, uh, he's tatted from head to toe. He looks like, like a bad dude, like somebody you wouldn't mess with his look, his demeanor, his haircut, like everything he's ripped. Like he just looks like a tough, mean person. Mm -hmm. And you talk to him, he's like, hey, man, how's it going? What's your name? You know, he's like that, you know? And, and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. But, but that's the thing, right? Like we always, not we, I'm just going to say, you know, for, as a generality, yes. you know, you judge like how you dress or, sure. you know, like if we were sitting here in tennis shoes and shorts and a, you know, ratted t-shirt, you might think, well, these guys probably don't know what they're talking about as much. We don't know what we're talking about now. We're dressed <laughs> nice. But I'm just saying, if we were like in shorts and, you know what it's I'm saying? Persona. Like it, sure. it means so, so, so much. Sure. Um, but but we do it on everything. We do it on you know you meet somebody, and you, like you, we were just talking about dating, right. and you go on a date and you meet somebody. I mean you're judging them from the second they walk Absolutely. in, how they walk, how they talk, how they carry themselves, well, what they're wearing. And you've got a preconceived notion based on what you saw online with pictures and whatnot, yeah. and everything you've read. So you've already gone through that process, mm -hmm. layers of it. Right. And then when you see them in person, now you're at like the next layer, which is you know what DefCon Five? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I'll give you another example of this is that, you know, we talk about addiction, um, which I, I honestly believe that all of us have some sort of an addiction to something, whether it might be a relationship or alcohol or whatever it hummus. is, or, or watching football on Sunday or hummus or whatever it is. But, but the, it's, it's interesting when you say somebody like, oh, you know, I was in rehab or something and people automatically like, oh, you must be, a f but actually some of those people are the most dialed in. Right and honest and real folks that I've ever met. Mm -hmm. And and that type of because stuff. Because they were honest enough to know they needed that. Yeah. And stick with it. Yeah. It, and that's that's powerful, right? That's powerful. The the other thing that, you know, we, we need to realize is that, you know, when you judge somebody on past actions, that's not fair. It's not. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. Because we can all grow and we can all be better. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The the a lot of times in relationships, you know, we talk about living in the past and things like that. And that's that's judgment from a whole other perspective of saying, hey, 
you know, you messed up this time. So that means you're going to do it again. You're definitely going to do it again. Or I'm going to judge you based on that. You know what happened last week or maybe not last week, but last year or, or two or years Or going into something where you're like, remember last time we went here, this happened. So don't be an asshole again. Kind right. Of a thing, right. Right. Yeah. And that's what people tend to do instead of just going in with a <clears> clean slate thinking, oh, this is going to be a good time. Yeah. Because once you make that judgy statement, that puts it out there and right. then another person is on the defensive. And, and that's contagious too. And if you're looking for something to be offended about, you're always going to find it. You're always going to find fail. it. Without fail. Yeah. And you're never going to be disappointed. So, so the thing, the thing with, um, you know, the other judgment too is, is when we, man, I, I never want to get into religion or anything like that, but like wars are generally about religion or money, right? Historically. It's control. Sure. Um, but that's judgment, right? Like, okay, if you're this color skin, then you're not as cool as we are or like, you know, female versus male, or, or, I mean, there's just so many things that we've been doing forever mm -hmm. that create evil mm -hmm. and, and conflict. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Like when you actually sit back and if you listen to like, I know this sounds crazy, but driving down the road, if you listen to the things you process in your brain, like you're not even consciously aware of how many times you judge. Right. It's amazing. Right. I did that one day. I just like, okay. But everything I look at, you know, like somebody pulls up in a Ferrari, you're like, oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. He must have like whatever, right? Sure. Or, or you know, some guy has this ratted out car with dents all over it and it's all dirty and it's full of clothes in the back or he yeah. might be the richest dude on the planet. Yeah. You know? Um, but the, the comment you just made about, um, oh my gosh, I just lost my train of thought, but you were, you were talking about um, conflict. Yeah. How, how judgment and, and, you know, that's what leads to evil and the conflict and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Now, I think we, we're even at a place where, like, people are judging people if they don't get involved in the conflict. Mm -hmm. And that's fascinating to me. Instead of respecting people who step back. So it's fascinating. It's like everyone wants someone to jump in and be involved in their judgment. And we never used to be that way, I feel like. It's just, like, well, wasn't so much a thing. Well, it goes back to, you know... We, we say like the child's mind and things, right? Like yes. when we're born, everybody's cool. Mm -hmm. We're like, goo goo gaga, give me some milk and my mm -hmm. freaking binky mm -hmm. thing and have a good time, right? Eat, drink, poop, yeah. sleep. Yeah. yeah, like that's a great life. Easy peasy. But from there, the only, you know, we always want to be part of a group. Yes. And and that's how that comes, right? Like you want to be part of my group because those guys over there are messed up. Yep, we're So you want to go over here because we're the good guys. Like mm -hmm. we know what's up. Right. That's, that's how our society is, right? Right. It's not intentionally to say, you know, these people are pieces of crap or whatever, but, right. but to not accept people for who they are. Sure. Right. And that may not be your jam and that's cool, right. but you, they're not bad because they don't want to believe and act like how you act, how you expect them to act. Mm -hmm. Now I'll say with that though, that you take that a step further and say, you know, like if somebody's malicious or they try to hurt people, then that's not okay. Then that is something that you would judge, right? Like that's what a courtroom's for. Clearly. Yeah. Um, but Generally in life, like, hey, man, you know, oh, you don't play tennis? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't even understand how we got to where we are, especially in our society. Like, we talk about mental health. That's a huge issue. Mm -hmm. Judgment of somebody creates anger mm -hmm. and unhealthy and, mm -hmm. you know, just poor, poor behaviors. And, and that's a big deal. And I, I think, too, that, you know, when you bring it to a level to where it is, what do you want to say, um, you know, devious, malicious, whatever, then that's an unhealthy level. That would be a red flag. Right. Completely different. I remember when um, my kids were young and I used to drag them into the family therapist all the time. It was like some little tiny thing. Oh my God, we have to go. We have to go see Di. And um, with one of my girls, she was sitting there <clears throat> and she said something that was just like really stuck with me because my daughter said she didn't want to be there. And we went through this whole conversation and she said, I don't want my friends to find out because they're going to think I'm weird. And Di walked her through this, this conversation and said, well, you're here because you actually want to find out more and you want to explore. Mm -hmm. They might be thinking the same thing you're thinking about the situation that we were discussing, and they're not finding out more. Mm -hmm. So who do you think is the smart one right now? And that one just really stuck with me, especially to break it down for like a nine-year-old, you know? Well, think about that inclusion piece too, or like that example right there, mm -hmm. that she wants to be part of a group. And if they think she's weird because she went to therapy, then she can't be part of that group. Right. So, so the other thing that judgment creates is it creates, it creates lies and it creates deception because you don't want to be judged. Mm -hmm. So maybe you might not tell somebody really who you are because they don't want them to judge you because you want to be part of their group. Right. There's that angle too. Right. Here's an interesting thing. So yesterday we had a, um, 
a safety stand down at work. You know, we were we were just missing some big things, and and uh, you know, we just do a hard stop and figure it out. So I'm sitting there with this kid, and uh, and he's he's 19, and he keeps saying, "Well, I'm 19," and I'm like, "So." So where you're saying we should expect less from a 19 year old than we should a 30 year old because yeah. you're just as smart as any of us here sure. and you're physically and capable. And he knows the expectation. Yeah. And we can all learn like you, like you don't learn at a different rate when you're 19 versus 30. Right. Maybe when you're 50 like me, cause I'm old, but not old, but you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's so crazy that people, sometimes we judge people too. They're not going to be capable because they're young. Right. That's not fair. You know? And that's, I had that in my own company and I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, man, we're missing this. Like we're all equal, like we should all help each other grow and build. And But from a construction perspective, like I would teach a 19 year old, like he could be more qualified or, or more capable than somebody who might be 30 or 40 with a family. Sure. Like it's just everybody has their skill set. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I was like, don't ever think that you're less than because you're 19. Mm -hmm. Granted, now you're going to give respect, life experience, things like that. But you're not less of a person because of your age. Right. That's, that doesn't even make sense. Huge judgment there. Well, that could be the mindset he lives from too. You know? Right. That could be. Well, and, and, you know, that might go back to childhood, too. Sure. You know, how we parent our children mm -hmm. and, and the example that we set for them. Mm -hmm. And we, we talked today. Here's a good question. And, you know, you can talk more about this because your experience with children and grandchildren and, you know, that whole thing is way beyond me. But I read this, this deal and I sent you a text uh, the other day about, you know, if you want to know how you're doing, ask your children. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to know who you are, ask your kids. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you. I can remember conversations specifically where, it, and it was the first time it hit me. Um, I think my, it was my oldest when she was eight. So this was 30 years ago. And we were in this, not a battle, but just like something wasn't right. And I was trying to tell her what she needed to do. And she looked at me and she said, you know, you might not be right just because you're the mom. And she wasn't being like sassy or anything. She was just made a matter of fact statement. Mm -hmm. And then at another point when we were in a thing um, like that, she said, um, sometimes I have good ideas. And it was about something bigger than like, you know, choosing ice cream or whatever. And after her second one, second statement like that, I thought, wow, I really need to like learn from my kids. Yeah. Like this is a big deal. Pure. I'm, I can really learn from them. Yeah. So, and I did. And learned a lot, but um, it definitely can change everything. You know, it can change your your perception of everything, and mm -hmm. it can make you walk into any situation with eyes wide open right. instead of a narrow mind. Yeah, and and it's so we we've talked before how that narrow mind. You know what I mean? It's easier to, it's easier to bond with somebody over hate than it is over love. Absolutely right. And and the kids bond over love. They bond over like, hey man, you want to play trucks in the sandbox? Like right. that's bitching. Let's go hang out. Yeah. Let's go ride bikes or yeah. let's play let's with dolls or yeah. let's go bake cookies with Ava, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And that's the stuff, that's yeah. the stuff that we should be bonding over. And that's what mental health is. Right. Yes. And I'm not lecturing. I'm, I'm not no, it's, on a soapbox. Coming from a place of pure intention instead of judgment. Yeah. Here's, here's another thing I was, I was reading the other day and it was about you know, letting your past go. We say let your past go, right? But, but really looking forward. Like if you're hung up on past things and you have an expectation of behavior or an event based on your past experience, you really can't grow. True. And, and, and what I mean from that is like, you ever hear people say, well, I wouldn't talk to them because I already know what they're going to say. Well, Absolutely. No, you don't. You actually don't know what they're mm -hmm. going to say. Mm -hmm. And and I get it. You know, oh, I beat my head against the wall for years and years and years. And it's the same outcome over and over and over and over. Okay, I get it. But to, to just say that, like, oh, I already know what my boss is going to say. Right. You know, and it was, it was interesting because, you know, I always tell people, I'm like, hey, just come and talk. Like, just ask me. Well, well, why, well I, I always kind of thought you'd be mad. I'm like, well, why would you think I'm going to be mad? But that's who they are. Right. Right. That's their experience with. Maybe like somebody Who that's knows? older or a boss or whatever. Or just anything. Yeah. And I'm like, man, what, how come How come like you would think like that? You know, right. I, I had this great conversation. Maybe you're walking around with a resting asshole face. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, it's an idea. Yeah. Um, it, it, I was talking to, to a gal that I dated, you know, and she's like, oh, you know, you must date tons and tons of women. And I was like, I did it one time. Yeah. And, and she goes, uh, she goes, well, I'm sure that'll never change. And I was like, actually, it did. I actually have a purpose. Like I date with purpose, you know, 
And, and it's interesting because like, that's one of those things. It's like that judgment thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And then we, we talked about, uh, I was going to go out with a gal member and I was like, she's super cool, but like, she's kind of, you know what I mean? I'm not super attracted to her. And you're like, no dude, go out with her. Right. Like that's judgment. Like, so you're going to think that she's not as cool because she's not as hot as some other girl. And that's not right. Right. That's not okay. Right. So, so, you know, that, that's a big deal, but, but we all do it, right? We have to, we catch ourselves, you and I do all the time. Sure. Um, but, you know, to catch yourself in real life and be like, oh, geez, man, what was I thinking? Well, but that's where it goes back to, you, you are those five people, those five closest people to you. Mm -hmm. You know, you become that. And it, who are these people? It, people who are more judgy and more hateful are likely hanging out with people, groups of people who are like that. Right. So if you feel people like that in your life, it's that, it's that constant awareness of, you know, are, are they takers? Are they people who make you feel bad? Are they people who frustrate you? Do you find your mood shift when you step away from them or you leave them? You know, if you go to dinner or hang out or whatever. So um, it's that constant awareness. And, and instead of calling another friend and complaining and bitching about, oh, well, you know, I went to happy hour with so-and-so. And, you know, every time I'm with her or him, it's always like this. And, you know, just going through the whole process of, of verbal barf of what isn't okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just not okay, right? And yeah. I think a lot of people aren't willing to look at that. But that's where that judgment just like perpetuates, right? Right. And it, it grows like a like a weed. And and we talk about like be who you are, man. Believe in what you want to believe in. Don't hurt anybody, but do your thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we we joke around, you know, like whatever the dating thing, like if you're a swinger or polyamorous, I don't even know what all the terms are, but who cares? Yeah. Like and that's the thing too, is if is if you try to hide who you are, then it's deception. Right. And that creates a problem down the road. Like if you're into something, then be into it. Be who you are. Mm -hmm. You're not going to, you're not hurting anybody. If I want to wear women's underwear, I'm going to wear women's underwear. I don't give a shit. And if, and if I tell people about it and they have a problem with it, so what? Right. You know but, what I mean? It's like it's me. People, people generally, I think are afraid to be who they are because they're afraid of being judged. Right. And it's, um, you know, that it sometimes isn't even like, a, they might not have self, a self-confidence issue, but it's, there's so much noise around them about judgment that they right. feel because they're around the wrong people. You know, too, I have to say that, you know, we did our truth on here and we bring that up. And, and that was that was a good thing for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but it was our truth. Right. It's ours. And and oh, people yes. could judge and be like, oh, my God. Right. Right. And, and I actually said, you know, nobody's going to want to date me. But that's the funny thing is because at least I tell the truth and at least, you know, I'm growing. Right. That would be my response. Mm -hmm. At least I told at least, you know, who I am. You know what I mean? At least I'm not full of shit like I was for a really long time. Yeah. And that's that's a critical thing. But I was full of shit because I didn't want to be judged. And I wanted to be part of the crew. And I wanted to, you know, have this or have that or, you know, have this friend or that friend. Because I but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if you're not real, then you're like, like what are you? You know what I mean? But like I, th if, I think that's self judgment. It is. Oh yeah, it's fear, right? That's part of it. Sure. For sure. Responding to um just almost like a hypothetical what yeah. a situation could be that's not even true. And you know, when I came to the studio today, there was a there was a gal in here and she was telling her story. And I won't she's not on our show, so I won't, you know, I don't I didn't get to know her or meet mm -hmm. her, but she was talking about some really, really gnarly stuff. And one of the things that she was talking about was like being trafficked. Mm -hmm. And she was an attractive middle aged woman. And I was and I thought in my head, I'm like, how would that even be? You know, because I have this preconceived notion, judgment mm -hmm. of what that looks like. Like right. a person that would be trafficked wouldn't be a good looking middle aged gal. Mm -hmm. But it, it like that's another that's almost kind of reverse judgment, right? Like, oh, you're probably OK because, you know, you live in Scottsdale and mm -hmm. you dress nice and everything's cool. That, that's the other way, too. Right. Like right. everybody's a human being and everybody has things going on. Mm -hmm. See, so that can work in reverse as well. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking that everything's OK, okay because you you know, you're sparkly and you have pretty things on and, you know, you look great today and that da 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 da, da that everything's cool in your life, which it is, but that doesn't mean it always is, right. you know? Well, I think we tell ourselves stories, we tell other people's stories, and then, you know, sometimes we, we twist stories and then we start to believe what we twisted. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it often has a motive that isn't a good motive. And, uh, you know, whether it's to protect ourselves or someone else, and that's where things get off track. Yeah, you know, and that, that goes back to that judgment thing too, you know? Mm -hmm. There's always, there's always an element of mental health in every single interaction. And I, I just, you know, one of the reasons why we want to talk about this today is just because it has such a huge impact. Absolutely. You know, if you take that out of, out of an interaction, then 
my God, you know, like that would be just amazing. Mm -hmm. What a healthy conversation about expectations or whatever. And, you know, we, we, on that dating thing, if you're worried about being judged, then you wouldn't tell the truth on who you really are. Right. Right. So that comes down to security too. Like, you know, I don't know, whatever you might say, yo, you got to like green eggs and ham. And I'll be like, I don't really like green eggs and ham. Mm-hmm. But if I wanted to date you, right, I'd be like, oh, I love green eggs and ham. And really, right. I hate it. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I don't want you to judge me because I want to be part of your like deal. Sure. You know, or. It's just you, taking on what you think, the, the perception of what you think the other person is looking for. Yeah. So that you can be accepted. Right. And not judged. Right. And, you know, you see, I see some of these groups, um, you know, like these big groups of people and they all hang out all the time together. And you're like, who in that group is real? Because that many people. And I get it, like you can all get along and stuff like that. But I'm just right. saying, like certain situations, you know, you can tell that people aren't being genuine. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? They're not being who they really, really are. Mm-hmm. And and but they just want to be part of this group, right? And we've all done it. I've done it. Mm-hmm. And and then you realize, like, wait a second, that only lasts a certain period of time. Well, Eric said he did that when we when you interviewed him. Eric, yeah. Eric said he did that. He would have big parties and have all these people over and yeah, you know, everyone having a great time and all this stuff and get everyone together and. It was and all then fake. The, it, the next day, it's like, that was all fake. It was all bullshit. Why did I even do it? Right, Until right. one day you crashed. Yeah. You can't keep that up. No, you can't. You right. can't keep, you have to be who you really are, you know, and then and, and not be scared of being judged, you mm-hmm. know. Um, you know, I, I tell my son, I, I joke with him all the time, like, hey, man, this is your path. Like, you believe what you want to believe. You be whatever orientation or gender or whatever you want to do. And he's, and he's always like, no, dad, no, 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 no. And I'm like, dude, don't say anything. Just be you. Mm-hmm. Just this is your journey, your life. Like you be you. Sure. Like who gives a shit what I think? Just don't hurt anybody. Right. Right. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt anybody else. Mm-hmm. Don't do harm. Mm-hmm. I'm cool. Mm-hmm. Be you. Right. But even even he is like, oh, 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 you know, he's in high school. Like think about judgment. Jesus. Oh, I can't you know, imagine. And, and that's where I think we miss. Right. Like we talk about the the physical education where there should be an hour of mental education every day too, you know, Absolutely. like you go to the gym and then you sit on a couch, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like it. But, but it's, it's so, so critical that, that we remember to do that. Right. And, yeah. and the other thing about this show is to remember that we have to break the cycle and change how we view things so we can support our kids when they grow up and, and hopefully they'll be better. Cause it's all we're doing systemic. is recreating the issue, right? Yeah. yeah systemic change in, in families and generations. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You, you told me about a gal that you helped um, in your coaching. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think, you know, I've told you about some of my past stuff and struggles and things like that. And sure. you were like, man, she was really, really hurting. She had this idea that she could never be okay. Right. 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 But now she's like amazing. Right. Because of how you coached her and, she, and what you told she her. She went from, I don't know how I'm going to survive to now just thriving and surviving. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And, and, you know, realizing that, that she's an amazing woman and she's going to be okay. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the other thing, too, I just realized, like, we give you shit about your dates, right? Like, you're on 54 now. Yeah. And you don't care. We're not judging you. You're like, fuck you. I can, I can date friggin' 90 people if I want to. This is my life and my deal. And yeah. if you don't like it, that's your problem. Yeah, nobody's getting hurt. Yeah, like you're having a good time, yeah, and having that's fun, great. Enjoying interactions, so I mean, yeah, yeah. And, and there's that it jest too. I think there's jest and not judgment, right? Like there's right. there's a there's a good way to have a good time and joke around things like that. But like that's a good example because you're like, I don't care. This is me. Yeah, you're not I'm, gonna sit there and I'm be like, even, oh, I've only dated one person. I'm not even and, slightly offended. Yeah, like <laughs> oh, I only uh, I've only I've you know I've only been with whatever. I've only dated one yeah. person, or yeah. you know I, I haven't dated in so long. Right. And you're like, nah, man, I'm on fifty four. Yeah. Yeah. But and me this, before, I would have been very offended and like taken offense to it and right. acted like I wasn't, and, you know, who knows. Yeah. But but be who you are, man. Yeah. Be real. And, you know, a lot of times I wasn't that way. Sometimes in relationships, we forget we forget who we are. Mm-hmm. And that's that goes back to that that love or need, because if you're if you need something, you're going to lie. You're I mean, I'm not going to say you're going to lie, this is the next but you're segment. more likely this is our next to. Subject, next it is segment. our next subject. We're going into it. It is. And, and you know, I'll stop. I'll yeah. shut up a little bit. But I'm going to take your whoobie away. Yeah, take my whoobie away. Um, but that it's so huge. Yeah. It's so huge, you yeah. know, because if you love somebody, you love them for them and you know who they are. Mm-hmm. That's what love is. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's the it's that deception of not knowing and that deception. You know, sometimes we get into that element. You're like, crap, I don't want to blow this. Right. So. All right, I just won't say that. Well, but right? again, fear of judgment. Right, right. Because the judgment might 
make the person leave or might make the person make another choice or right. who knows what. But it's it ties back to that. But, Absolutely. you know, I, I guess I guess the, the funny thing is, is like the truth always comes out. Right. We say that like it that's does. like the old truth always comes out, you know, and it does. It does, though. It really does. It's not. And it doesn't come out in ways that you might expect, mm -hmm. but it might come out in your behavior sure. or whatever. And that's when those red flags start to occur. Right. Like mm -hmm. the you know, we've talked about a number of different things in a relationship that could be a red flag. And and those things are things that be like, whoa hard stop like okay what's really going on here like let's talk about this a little bit you know right and uh and those are those are big big things but you know it, it does like if you're worried about being judged then you can't be truthful true that's what it boils down to huh? it's true it is the biggest blocker there is it's crazy yeah. it's crazy stuff yeah. and and we all do it so that's something that we can improve on for sure mm -hmm. so um anyway are we good on judgment i think we're good all right everybody thanks for watching the scott framer and shelly netco on the mental knot we appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day.